Hey everyone, Tiger Tanaka here, and welcome back to more Pikmin! In the last part, we crash-landed on this strange alien planet with only 30 days of, well, life support systems, since oxygen is poisonous to us, and we found these strange alien creatures that we named Pikmin. And in this part, we are going to the Forest of Hope and see what other ship parts we can find here. Now, I'm playing this on an emulator, so the load times are going to be, like, non-existent. And those little title cards for each area are kind of the loading screen, so you're not going to be able to see them that long. My dolphin has returned to the surface along with the Pikmin's onion. Being alone on this strange planet makes me somewhat uneasy, so I shall call the Pikmin out of the onion. All you do is stand the light beneath the onion and press A. So let's bring out all 25 of our Pikmin. Now, let's build up our army a bit. Because we've got some stuff to do today. Let's try getting this wall torn down here. Go ahead and break down this pellet here. It's a different color, so once we get the red Pikmin to get it, it won't produce as many Pikmin. It'll only produce one instead of two. Because if you get Pikmin of the same color to get the same color pellet, they produce more Pikmin. So like I said, if it's if this was a red one pellet, it'd give me two red Pikmin. But since it's a yellow pellet, I'm only going to get one since the red Pikmin is carrying it back. Which probably means, well, I would at least hope you guys will be able to figure out that means there's going to be more than one type of Pikmin. Which we'll actually get into later in this day. Just got to wait for this one to sprout. There we go. We got 28 Pikmin. And they broke down the wall. And I apologize for the kind of glitchy sounding audio. I'll see if I can take care of that later. But these are our first enemies. These are Bulborbs, and there's our first death. Yeah, Pikmin can die pretty easily in this game because pretty much everything on this planet eats them. And as you saw there, it took some damage, but not too much. If you get too much damage, you can click on your ship and it'll heal you. So that's pretty nice. Let's get some of these Pikmin to carry back these things, so that way we can get more Pikmin, build up our army a bit. Get rid of these bull orbs here. I usually have better aim than this. If you aim correctly, you can actually kill these things in like one hit. Okay, how many do I have with me? 16, so just enough where I can have three of each, or three of them, for each bull orb, and then I can carry that 10 pellet back. We're already getting a pretty good start here. Take down these pellets here. This game is all about utilizing your time well enough so that you can maximize your army and just get everything done at the same time. While those Pikmin are carrying stuff back, I'm growing more Pikmin, plucking them so I can get stuff going. And as you see there, there's some tall grass there. That's actually not part of just the background or the foreground or anything. Actual 3D model. So once these Pikmin get here, speed this up a little bit. Yeah, you can see we're starting to get a pretty big number of Pikmin here. We had 25 at the start of the day. Now we've got 57. But if I get the Pikmin to interact with this grass here, they start plucking it and Nectar comes out. And that automatically turns... Well, Olimar's gonna explain it. Another intriguing discovery! A local variety of grass produces a sort of yellow nectar. When the Pikmin drink this delicacy, they instantly mature into flowers. This apparent Pikmin favorite seems to be full of nutrition. Closer observation is needed to determine the strengths and peculiarities of these flower Pikmin. So what flower Pikmin do is that they have a little bit more durability before they die. Flower Pikmin will turn into buds and then leaves depending on how much damage they take. 
so it's pretty rare that they instantly die like the Pikmin were earlier against those little bulb orbs. Alright, now that we've got 57 Pikmin with us, I say it's time we take down one of those bigger bulb orbs that we saw snoozing right next to this part here. And, as Chugga Conroy has dubbed this the official name for the attack, let's bum rush him! Always a good idea to bring a huge army against these bulb orbs because if you're not careful, they can take down your army pretty darn fast. I believe they can scoop up like three or four Pikmin in one bite. That's pretty big. But, before we go any further, why is the Eternal Fuel Dynamo? Has an unlimited energy supply. I don't have to worry about saving electricity anymore. This will make my fight for survival a bit easier. And you need 40 Pikmin to carry it. Luckily, I've got 43 with me, so that's not an issue. Get some more of these pellets down. I'm not going to be using these for the red Pikmin because, well, I guess we'll see in a bit here. Don't want to say anything too obvious, even though I'm pretty sure I made it obvious as it is. But, we'll see how many Pikmin that Bulborb gives us. Go from 57 to 69. Lol, 69. But yeah, that Bulborb gave us 12 new Pikmin. And I didn't even lose a single Pikmin in that fight, so that's pretty darn good. Another difference between Flower Pikmin and Leaf Pikmin is that they're more efficient at their jobs so that they move faster. And I don't know for sure, but I think they do more damage to enemies, but I don't know. This should light things up. No more candles for me! I have now recovered two out of 30 ship parts. If I can just find three more, I should be able to increase my ship's capabilities. And by increasing ship's capabilities, he means he'll be able to explore a new area. So that's pretty nice, but we still have plenty to do in the Force of Hope first. So let's focus on that before we do anything else. Wait for those two to come up later. A tip you can do is that uh, if you leave Pikmin unplucked and just leave them in the ground, they'll actually mature and do flower Pikmin a lot faster than they normally would. So I'm going to get those guys down on the wall. I'm going to go back and pluck those two Pikmin that were just born. And by the time I do that, those guys should have that wall taken down. Because those white walls are not that durable. Pikmin can usually take them out in a few seconds if you've got a lot of flowers with you. Let's get these guys going a little bit more. And yeah, they're already done with the wall, basically. Which is good, because I'm not sure if that bulb orb would have gotten to them first or not. Here we go. And you want to take out the little bulb orbs as fast as you can, otherwise the cries will wake up the mother. So, that's bum rush! And since I have 70 Pikmin this time, that thing didn't even get a chance to retaliate. But, I'm going to dismiss these reds here, and... We found another onion. This is a yellow onion. And just like the red onion gave out red Pikmin, the yellow onion will give out yellow Pikmin. I'm gonna take down this yellow pellet here real quick. My clock has indicated the coming of noon. From now on, I must pay close attention to the sun meter on my monitor and choose my actions accordingly. So it is best for me to review my monitor's data. Across the top of my monitor are the sun meter and the day display. At the bottom, blah, 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 blah. This is basically just saying that you have a limited amount of time each day, and if you run out of time, Olimar will automatically bail, leaving any uncalled for Pikmin behind so that he doesn't die. But anyway, we've got a yellow Pikmin here, and it looks kind of different from the red other than color. Color is different, but it seems to be a Pikmin nonetheless. First glass seems to suggest this one has what in some circles could be considered very large ears. Looks like it may weigh less than the others. In what other ways might it be different from the red Pikmin? No matter, they're obviously quite similar, so I shall call this one a Pikmin as well. So, as you can see there, yellow Pikmin are able to be thrown much higher than reds, so they can reach places that no other Pikmin can reach. 
So now we can spend some of our day building up the yellows. Pluck these guys. And may I just say how adorable the Pikmin sounds are? Seriously, just listen to them. They're just cute little squeaks. But Olimar did say that he was wondering if Yellow Pikmin were different in other aspects, which they actually are. have been seeing these rocks here throughout the entire map, and Yellow Pikmin can pick them up. The Yellow Pikmin have picked up some peculiar stones. Why do they decide to grab them? This action seems to be instinctive to the Yellow Pikmin, but just what are these strange glowing stones? Brightly glowing cracks cover them. These cracks indicate that there's tremendous power locked away within. This merits further research. And what better to research than by testing it out? First off, Yellow Pikmin and Yellow Pikmin holding bomb rocks will divide into two separate groups, so that is very useful. These are bomb rocks. They explode when Yellow Pikmin decide to drop them. So not only can they break down these stone walls that Pikmin can't take down normally, they can also do some serious damage to opponents and allies alike. So that stone wall is taken care of. We can also get that stone wall, but I think I'll wait for that because going after that right now would not be the smartest thing to do. For the time being, though, I'm going to try to increase my yellow Pikmin numbers a little bit more. I'm not very good at throwing yellow Pikmin onto very specific objects, so forgive me. And we'll get these two on that blue pellet over there. And then by the end of this, I'll have enough yellow Pikmin to carry that bulb orb to the yellow onion. Now you can have more than one color carrying something, it's just that you gotta have a majority of the color you want to carry it. Like if I had both yellows and reds carrying, say, a bulb orb, if I wanted it to go to the yellow Pikmin, I would need it to have mostly yellow Pikmin carrying it. But, let's get these yellows here. An unactive Pikmin will try to do whatever they can. Like if there's something that they can interact with next to them, they will interact with it. So be very, very careful with that, because that can screw you up quite a bit if you're not paying attention. Like see there, those reds are trying to carry that bulb orb. And if I didn't have that many yellows carrying that bulb orb, those reds could wind up carrying it back to their onion and the yellows wouldn't get it at all. But yes, you can only have 100 Pikmin on the field at a time. All other seeds are stored in the onion. So you don't have to worry about wasting seeds or anything. They're just literally in storage. And I didn't mean to do that, sorry about that. But yeah, this day isn't too much about collecting parts, you're trying to increase your yellow Pikmin numbers, but I've got about 30 of them with me right now, and honestly, that's more than enough. So let's get these Pikmin here, and let's kill some more Bulb Orbs, because I can. And these things coming out of the ground are sheer wigs. The only ones you need to worry about are the purple ones. The white ones cannot hurt you whatsoever. But the purple ones have those uh, pincers that they can hurt with. And I did lose a Pikmin, unfortunately, but it's not that big of a deal. But, as we can see here... Yeah, I guess I'll let the reds take some of that stuff. But... The yellows can get this part that... Well, I guess reds can get up there too, never mind. But... Come on, guys. There we go. That should be enough. There we go. Uh, yeah, let's get the red some of the stuff. You're honestly not going to need that many yellows throughout the game. 
I don't think you need any more than like 30 or 40 at a time. It's my whimsical radar! With this I'll be able to see all nearby ship parts in a single glance. I just press Y to check it. This find fills me with great hope. Yes, that is a very, very useful treasure in the game. Well, ship part, I guess I should say. But yeah, most of the ship parts don't really do anything to help you, but the Whimsical Radar, it really helps you along your journey, because you can see the entire map for the entire area, and you can plan your day out according to that. But, let's get some more of these bomb rocks here, because we have another wall to bombard. No pun intended. Okay, come on guys. I know your leaves, but you gotta move a little bit faster. Um, crap, there's Shearwakes here. I thought there was only gonna be one group of them. Okay, I'll dismiss you guys here. I'll grab the reds. Yeah, sure, you guys can get that. You'll actually be out of the way that way. Okay, so let's get these shear wigs out of the way so that I won't accidentally sh blow up my own Pikmin with the bomb rocks. It should also be noted that shear wigs. Whoa. Uh, yeah, sundown is approaching, so I gotta be careful of that. I don't think I'm gonna be able to get this ship part, actually, so that kinda sucks. And you wanna be careful about calling dismissed Pikmin that are holding bomb rocks because occasionally they'll just drop the bomb rocks and it will set them off. So you'll want to be very, very careful about that. But let's just go ahead and go back to the base, because there's not much else we can do for the last few seconds here. And Man, those sounds are really glitchy sounding. I'll see if I can get that fixed before the next video, because that's really bad. And we got the Whimsical Radar just in time. Whimsical Radar. This important part can detect the locations of the other missing parts. The radar will be added to my monitor. Blah, blah, blah. You, d you guys don't really need to see the controls for it. If I can just find two more, I should be able to increase my ship's capabilities. Yeah, let's call the Pikmin. Call the Pikmin. Pluck this last one. And if we push Y, I said push Y, not X. Ah, come on, guys. Okay. It's not letting me push Y for some reason. Okay, then. But we have completed our first actual day and not just the tutorial. And you can see all the Bulborbs wake up and they try to look for left behind Pikmin to eat. Two days since impact, it appears that many of my ship's parts could have landed in this region. If I can just recover the parts of my radar, I should be able to use my radar screen. How that would improve my chances. Then I'd only have to press Y to locate my parts. Yet, there seems to be many hostile life forms here. If I'm attacked and my spacesuit takes damage, I must return to my ship, stand in front of it, and press A to make suit repairs. Okay, I already explained this game. But we lost three Pikmin in battle. We sprouted 103 today, so that's pretty good. We've already got 41 yellow Pikmin, almost half of what we have for reds. That's already really good. But that'll do it for today. Next time on Pikmin... We'll be going back to the Forest of Hope and collecting more ship parts. See you guys then!